Good afternoon. Welcome to Lunch with Books live stream. Uh, my name is Sean. I'll be your host. Uh, just a few announcements before I introduce our guest for today. This Thursday, our People's University series on physical science continues. We will learn about chemistry, fundamentals thereof, with my sister, Dr. Erin Duffy. It starts at 6.30 p.m. And uh, you'll, be, you'll have a chance to win another, uh, th this time a pint glass that features the chemistry of beer. You, know, you can drink whatever you want from it. It's just you learn about the chemistry of beer. And uh, some books that my sister is giving away. So that's this Thursday. Next Tuesday, we will have part three of Legendary Locals of Wheeling, Lesser Known Locals of Wheeling. And uh, that will be a biographical program about nine African-American leaders from Wheeling during Jim Crow segregation. Uh, so that'll be next Tuesday at noon. Our guest today is Linda Cummins. She is a freelance writer and editor in Wheeling. She retired in 2020 after 43 years of employment with the Wheeling News Register and the Intelligencer, where she served as a staff writer, columnist, assistant city editor, and life section editor. She is a graduate of Bethany College and is active in community organizations and church-related endeavors. Here is Linda Cummins. Thank you, Sean. Um, at first, I want to thank Sean Duffy for inviting me to prepare this presentation on Wheeling native Dr. Marion Teresa Moses. It's always a great honor to be part of the Lunch with Books program. I also want to thank my lifelong friend, Vicki Lees Kim, who is a nurse in Los Angeles and who introduced me to Dr. Moses through an obituary published in the Los Angeles Times this past September. Vicki noticed that the obituary um, stated that Dr. Moses was born in Wheeling, West Virginia. I owe special thanks to John Moses, um, Dr. Moses' cousin. He's the executive director of Youth Services System here in Wheeling. And he put me in touch with his sisters, Judy Moses and Jackie Moses, who in turn um, introduced me to Dr. Moses' brother, Marin Moses, who lives in California. Uh, Marin Moses has been an invaluable uh, source of information and insight into his sister's life and work. Um, he also provided all of the incredible photographs that are featured in this presentation. I am exceedingly grateful to Marin um, for his assistance. Now I will share the story of how a woman born in Wheeling in the early 20th century became a national authority on pesticides, as well as the trusted colleague and physician of labor leader Cesar Chavez and the beloved friend and personal physician of social activist Dorothy Day. Um, it's appropriate that this program is being presented today um, because Sunday would have been the 85th birthday of Dr. Moses. Um, also, the late Cesar Chavez was in the news last week when it was reported that President Biden um, has placed a, a bust of Chavez on display in the Oval Office. Dr. Marion Teresa Moses was born in Wheeling on January 24, 1936. She was the second of eight children born to Marin Moses and Mary Wakeham Moses. Um, Sean, please start the slideshow now. The family lived at 3117 McCulloch Street, shown here. The house was torn down when the freeway was built. A wall and steps are all that remain at this site. Her brother related that their father grew up in the same neighborhood and knew Walter Ruther. Next slide, please. This photo shows the Moses family in Wheeling in 1944. Marion is on the left. As a child, Marion attended Immaculate Conception School in South Wheeling. The family attended mass at Our Lady of Lebanon Church in Center Wheeling. Both sets of grandparents were Lebanese immigrants. Her father was a salesman for Weimer Meatpacking and Armor and Company. The family moved to Charleston, West Virginia in 1946 when Marion was 10 and her brother was six. 
The move occurred after their father was asked to open a branch of a Pittsburgh frozen food distributor. Marion's interest in the medical field was sparked by the death of their one-year-old sister, Margaret Rose, when Marion was eight. Next slide, please. This photo shows Marion with baby Margaret Rose. Her brother said Marion later wrote a long article in the American Journal of Nursing, in which she mentioned that when we were little, she knew her little sister didn't have to die. It was one of the motivating factors in her becoming a doctor. Um, her brother recalled she always wanted to be a doctor to start. Our dad said, no, women become nurses. And for some reason, she listened. It was probably the last time in her life that she ever listened to a man. But there was a certain obedience to her. Cesar gave her a job and she went out and did it. Likewise, my dad was the authority. She did what he said. Marion, who was always a good student, graduated from Georgetown University with a Bachelor of Science degree in nursing in 1957 and earned a master's degree in nursing education from Columbia University Teachers College in 1960. She worked as a nurse in Charleston and in California, but never lost sight of her original goal. As her brother pointed out, she always wanted to become a doctor. She was 40 when she graduated from medical school, which was very remarkable at that time. Marion was working full time as a nurse in California and studying English literature at the University of California at Berkeley when she learned of the farm workers movement. She met Cesar Chavez in October 1965 and soon became involved in the United Farm Workers Union. She served for five years as an organizer, a volunteer nurse, and healthcare administrator for the union, earning $5 a week plus room and board. She provided care to Chavez during his many fasts for nonviolence and against pesticides. In fact, she was featured in a 2014 documentary titled Cesar's Last Fast. Chavez sent Moses to New York City in 1968 to boycott grape shipments and raise funds for the union. In New York, Marion met feminist Gloria Steinem, who offered Moses a place to stay, and they became lifelong friends. She and Steinem organized benefits and picketed supermarkets. Uh, one of the people who joined them in the protests was uh, Huntington Hartford, who was an heir to the A&P supermarket chain. I'm sure that didn't go over well with his family. Uh, next slide, please. This photo taken by noted photographer Jill Kremitz at the Carnegie Hall benefit in 1968 shows from left Gloria Steinem, actress Lauren Bacall, and Marion. Next slide, please. Uh, another photo taken by Kremitz at the Carnegie Hall benefit for the union in 1968, shows from left, George McGovern, Lauren Bacall, Julian Bond, Marion, and Gloria Steinem. In an interview with the New York Times after Dr. Moses' death, Steinem said, like any good organizer, she was a connector of different worlds. The author and activist added, to get a phone call from Marion, was to know that you were going to be asked to do something and that you were going to do it. Steinem told the LA Times, she was very brave. She was often the only woman doing the kind of work she was doing. Dr. Moses dedicated her life to justice and compassion, according to Steinem. In the LA Times interview, Steinem is quoted saying, the courage and conscience she modeled have influenced the rest of my life. Next slide, please. This photo taken by Bob Fitch shows Marion with workers' children at a clinic in California circa 1967. Next slide, please. This photo shows Marion with Cesar Chavez at the Union site in Delano, California in 1969. 
Next slide, please. This photo taken by Jerome Lackner shows Marion working at the Selena Strike Clinic in 1970. Next slide, please. This photo of Marion at 40 Acres, the farm workers movement's property near Delano was taken in 1971. Next slide, please. In this photo, Marion is, show, is seen showing Cesar Chavez a card that states, if at first you don't agree with me, try, try again. This sign was displayed in Marion's apartment. Next slide, please. This photo shows Marion talking with Cesar Chavez in his office at 40 Acres. Next slide, please. A photo of Cesar Chavez and Marion taken probably in the early 1970s. Next slide, please. Another photo of Marion with Cesar Chavez taken in the late 1980s or early 1990s. Next slide, please. This photo of, of Cesar and Marion also was taken in the late 18, 1980s or early 1990s. Next slide, please. This photo shows Marion in the field with a worker family in 1990. Next slide, please. Another photo of Marion in the field with a farm worker in the background. Marion also introduced Chavez to Catholic activist Dorothy Day in New York in 1968. Next slide, please. This photo of Marion, Cesar Chavez, Dorothy Day, and an unidentified woman was taken probably in the late 1960s or early 1970s. Moses left the United Farm Workers in 1971 to pursue her dream of becoming a doctor. She completed pre-med studies at UC Berkeley and earned a medical degree from Temple University in Philadelphia in 1976. She served an internship in internal medicine at the University of Colorado Medical Center and a residency in occupational medicine at Mount Sinai Medical Center in New York City. While attending medical school and during her residency, Marion visited friends at the Catholic Workers' House in New York, and through that became a close friend of Dorothy Day, whom she first met in 1964. She and Day were both voracious readers and spent hours talking about books her brother related. Next slide, please. This photo shows Marion with Dorothy Day, Notice all the books on the shelves behind them. During a 1977 visit to Day's cottage at the Spanish camp on Staten Island, Day patted Dr. Moses' hand and said, it's so nice to have a woman doctor. Thus began her role as Day's personal physician. Day's daughter, Tamar Hennessy, believed that Moses' medical care added years to Day's life. At least a couple of times a month, Marion would go out and have dinner with her. A really beautiful friendship formed, her brother recalled, of Marion's experience with Dorothy Day. Next slide, please. Another photo of Dorothy Day and Marion. Um, Marion seems to be showing her some sort of documents. Um, next slide, please. Um, this photo of Dorothy Day and Marion, um, they're in some sort of building. I don't know what exact, where exactly they're going, but there they are. Um, next slide, please. This photo of Dorothy Day and Marion with a group of people was taken at some sort of celebration. Um, I'm not quite sure whether it's a birthday party. It, it may be because there are candles on that large cake. Uh, Dr. Moses studied for a doctorate in epidemiology at Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore for two years before returning to California, where she worked as a medical director for the United Farm Workers from 1983 until 1986. She founded the Pesticide Education Center in San Francisco in 1988 and served as its director until her retirement in 2016. Monica Moore, co-founder of the Pesticide Action Network, described Dr. Moses' commitment to farm workers as being way beyond professional. 
In an interview with the LA Times, Moore stated, for her, the work she did was personal, spiritual. Her passion ran deep and very, very long. Concerned about pesticide poisonings and cancer clusters, Dr. Moses conducted research, presented workshops, testified before congressional committees, and participated in advocacy event efforts. Her published works include two books, Harvest of Sorrow, which was adapted as a video narrated by actor Martin Sheen and designer Poisons. Dr. Moses underwent heart valve replacement surgery four or five years ago. Her brother related that after the surgery, Marion needed um, care and re rehabilitation in a facility for 30 days. However, the health authorities balked um, at allowing her to do that because she just had, lived, she lived on social security and limited savings. Well, someone contacted Cesar Chavez's granddaughter, Julie Chavez Rodriguez, who had served in the Obama administration and at that time was state director of US Senator Kamala Harris's office. Um, not long after being contacted, a letter went out to the health authorities from Senator uh, Harris's office. And Dorothy got, I mean, excuse me, Marion got the treatment that she needed in the rehab facility. Um, coincidentally, um, Julie Chavez Rodriguez has been appointed by President Biden to be the director of the White House Office of Intergovernmental Affairs. Um, even as Dr. Moses' health started to, to decline, her brother said she would still do a lot of phone consulting. She was keeping up to date on her research on the computer. But in her last year, she didn't have a lot of energy. On August 28, 2020, Dr. Moses died of heart failure and renal failure at age 84 in San Francisco. Her brother said that her ashes will be interred in the grave of their baby sister, Margaret Rose, in Mount Calvary Cemetery in Wheeling. Dr. Moses is survived by five remaining siblings, Martha, Marin, Marcella, Martin, and Marlene. Now several months after Dr. Moses' death, her family and friends offer a glimpse into the person behind the professional exterior. Her brother, Marin, continues to maintain a close relationship with a member and former chairman of the county public libraries director. served as Paul and Marin's mother's and met Moses at the time. Linda, they called occasion and talked about her studies. Over the years, Tess said a lot about Dr. Moses' activities and accomplishments from her brother. She was larger than life. She really was, Tess remarked. Her cousin, Jim Moses, a Wheeling native who was a teacher in San Francisco, spent considerable time with Dr. Moses in her years. She remembers her spirit and humor. She was my octogenarian buddy, Jan Moses, adding, I miss her dearly. Describing sister's personality, Moses said, she was the alpha dog of the Moses family. She Linda. was all very determined, very driven. She knew what she wanted and went directly for it. Linda, she you... never did anything halfway. She was very determined. Um, despite her abrasive personality, she had one of the kindest, most considerate bedside manners of anyone you could ever imagine, her brother observed. In Dr. Moses' final years, Jackie Moses helped her go through several boxes of information and memories. and many letters from famous figures. Um, next slide, please. This photo shows Marion and Ethel Kennedy in beachwear at the Kennedy compound in Hyannis. 
just one example of the many famous friends that Marion made over the years. Next slide, please. Another photo of Marion talking with Ethel Kennedy. The photo is inscribed with a notation by Marion that it was taken in August 1988 on the day Cesar broke his back. Boxes of on the Stanford or some from nineteen sixty to nine seventy in the Urban Affair of State University's Walter Root Library in Detroit. The collection reflects her work with United farm workers and includes correspondence with a number of notable leaders. In a lengthy online post on August 29, 2020, officials of the United Farm Workers mourned Dr. Moses' passing. The post by Jocelyn Sherman noted that Dr. Moses was a national authority on the pesticide poisoning of agricultural workers. Sherman wrote, Dr. Moses turned a weekend in Delano, California into a lifetime of service, helping Cesar and farm workers combat the perils of pesticides. Miriam Powell, author of The Crusades of Cesar Chavez, wrote a lovely tribute that was published in the LA Times on September 6, 2020. She stated, among the many remarkable people I have met during years of writing about the farm worker movement, Marion Moses stands out. Not as the most accomplished, intelligent, or influential, though she was all of those things, but because she possessed a moral clarity and a force that powered her through an extraordinary journey. Powell observed, her legacy offers a beacon of hope and a badly needed respite in this age of anxiety. Time after time, in her determined way, Moses overcame obstacles to do good. In conclusion, it saddens me that despite her national acclaim, Dr. Moses remained largely unknown in her native city during her lifetime. It is my hope that with this presentation, and future scholarship, Dr. Moses will receive the honor that she deserves in the city of her birth. Thank you all. Are there any questions or comments? Linda, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. We had some audio problems. Most of it was fine, but I'd, I'd like you, if you don't mind, to repeat the section on uh, Mr. Hess, Ted Hess, because that, okay. that was broken up. And then the, the part about the Ruther Library. So just oh, okay. Right. All right. Um, as, I, as I mentioned, um, Dr. Moses' brother, Marin, um, continues to maintain a close relationship with his law school roommate, wheeling attorney Lester Ted Hess, a longtime member and former chairman of the Ohio County Board Pub, Public Library's Board of Directors. Ted Hess served as a pallbearer at Marin's mother's funeral and met Dr. Moses at that time. They corresponded occasionally and talked about her study of pesticides. Over the years, Hess said he heard a lot about Dr. Moses' activities and accomplishments from her brother. She was larger than life. She really was, Hess remarked. Um, one of the other things that I mentioned, um, Dr. Mo Moses' brother recently sent 25 boxes of her material on the farm workers movement to Stanford University's archives. In addition, in 1984, Dr. Moses placed some of her papers dating from 1960 to 1970 in the archives and labor and Urban Affairs at Wayne State University's Walter Ruther Library in Detroit. The, the collection reflects her work with United Farm Workers and includes correspondence with a number of notable leaders in labor circles, politics, government, 
um, entertainment. It's just really amazing to see the list of names. Oh, thank you, Linda. That that completes it because what we had missed those two very important sections. But uh, I'm I'm not sure why the sound went out when it did. But thank you for uh, clarifying that. So, You're welcome. Okay, we're get, uh, very well done. Thank you, and, and a nice tribute to uh, Dr. Moses. And we're getting a lot of nice uh, comments from people. Um, here's a question. Uh, did Dr. Marion Moses specifically write or co-write any books about the farm union in Salinas? Um, the, the one book that, well, actually both books had to deal with her work with the farm workers. Um, the one book um, in particular, um, The Harvest of Sorrow, that's probably her most well-known book. And that was later made into a video for farm workers. And it was narrated by Martin Sheen, who, of course, was a close associate of Cesar Chavez. Um, her other book was Designer Poisons. And that was about the, the problem of the pesticides that she noticed uh, were poisoning the farm workers and their children. Um, she published um, a lot of articles in journals and, and, and other scholarly pub publications. But those were the two books that she wrote. Here's another question. Um, thank you. Did you say she's buried in Mount Calvary Cemetery? Her ashes will be interred there. They, uh, they haven't been um, buried there yet, but they will be in, her brother said that they will be interred on the grave of their baby sister, Margaret Rose, who died at the age of one. Um, when they were still living in Wheeling. So that is to, to come at some time in the, in the near future. And uh, maybe you mention it, um, I know that Walter Ruther went to the great boycott and the strike. Do you know if she met him or interacted with him at all? Um, I didn't find any specific references um, to that, although it's, it's entirely possible that she did um, Ruther was a little bit older than, than Marion, um, because her, her father grew up in the same neighborhood as Walter Ruther and knew him. Um, I believe there's correspondence, um, in the files that are, that are at the Ruther library at Wayne State. Um, the, the, the files take up, I think something like 1.5 linear feet of archival space. Uh, in the in the Wayne Library, and her brother said that you know the the twenty five boxes of material that he sent to Stanford. He said it was just amazing the the photographs that she had, the, the all the documentation, um, and he said you know to look in her Rolodex was just it was just amazing to see the people who were who had contact information in her Rolodex. Um, a lot of compliments are, are flashing up on the screen. Oh, thank you. I just wanted to let people see. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that was very well done, Linda. Thank you so much. Oh, I want thank to you. Give people it was my pleasure to be able to do it. Um, it. It's just really interesting. I mean, I you know, one can speculate as to why she wasn't well known in Wheeling, except you know, to her family and and some friends. Um, I can only um, imagine that, that it was possibly because her immediate family had been gone from, from Wheeling for so long. Um, and you know perhaps the fact that she was a woman meant that she didn't get quite as much attention back in her hometown as she might have. Um, and also, you know, I think we have to be aware of the, the sad realization that the labor movement and the farm workers movement was not, not entirely popular in some circles. And that may have contributed to the fact that, that she wasn't as well, her work wasn't as well known um, back here in Wheeling. But I hope that that wrong can be righted now. Well, and this is a good step in that direction. And uh, we've heard from a couple of uh, her family members uh, complimenting your presentation. 
And I can answer Mr. Moses George. The program will be available for replay on YouTube as well as on Facebook. And on, if you go to the library's website to our live stream page, you'll be able to find it there as well. Um, are there any other questions for Linda? I'll just give you a moment while I uh, remind everyone that this Thursday, our People's University continues at 6.30. Dr. Aaron Duffy uh, will talk about the fundamentals of chemistry. And the week after that, she'll tell you all about uh, the battle against uh, antibiotic resistant bacteria, which is another important uh, area. Uh, it's not just about viruses, but there are lots of microorganisms out there that are evolving to take us down. So uh, that's th this week and next. Uh, and there's a another compliment <laughs> and one from Dottie Thomas. What's her family related to the Moses family here in Wheeling? She may have missed that part of it. Um, yes. Um Marion's father was a brother of Deacon John Moses, um, who was well known at Our Lady of Lebanon Church. And um, while Dr. Moses' immediate family went to Charleston, and then many of them ended up in California, um, her uncle John and his family stayed primarily in Wheeling, although they're at least one of, of his daughters is in California. And it's interesting to note that um, Dr. Moses' family, all of the children, all eight children, their first names begin with the letter M. And all of her cousins on, from, from Deacon John Moses and his wife Sophie, their names all begin with the letter J. John and, and Joe and Judy and Jackie. Um, it, it, so it's interesting the, the the traditions that that um, that that carried on through the family. Um, there probably are, are many other cousins in the Wheeling area um, because it was a, a big extended uh, Lebanese family. And I noticed that um, Marion's mother's maiden name was Wakem. So I'm sure that that there are branches of that part of the family still in Wheeling. Yeah. Um. Here's a comment, uh, Dottie New Deacon. And Dave Moses says, it corrects you, actually began with M-A-R. Right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he would know. Yes. Okay. Uh, again, Linda, excellent. Uh, thank you for uh, bringing this person's work to light for us in Wheeling, who those of us who did not know about her, I did not know until uh, I think you brought it up online when she had passed away, that she had uh, that she was from Wheeling, and uh, hopefully this leads to uh, more accolades for her because she deserves them. And, she uh, certainly does. Yeah. Thank you. I I was you know I really when I learned of her I was I was surprised I was shocked. And I was embarrassed that I didn't know about her. You know, I, yeah. she's somebody that we should know. And um, it it really um, it's an honor to be able to introduce her to to people in in her hometown where she should be known. I I, I agree a hundred percent. And I thank you for doing that and doing such an excellent job and finding all those wonderful photographs. Which, uh, well, I, I have credit her brother Marin in California. He's a delight. Um, we spoke for over an hour, and he sent me just loads and loads of photographs, um, including one um, that 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 he just sent to me um, yesterday of Marion and their older siblings um, with a group of children. It looks like it might be a Sunday school class or a confirmation class at. Um, um, Our Lady of Lebanon with with Father Abraham, the you know the famous priest who yeah. was there. Um, so they they really do have wonderful wheeling connections. And and Marin loves loves wheeling. He remembers coming to the the Marajans when he was a boy, and and he has great memories of wheeling too. Great, excellent. Thank you, Linda. Um, next week we will do some more of this. That is. Uh, talking about people from Wheeling who deserve to be better known. Uh, and those uh, will have nine people you 
maybe you've heard of, maybe you haven't, uh, but you should. You should know them, and, and we'll talk about them next week on Tuesday, February 2nd at noon from the African-American community here in Wheeling. So uh, thanks, everyone, for attending, and thank you again, Linda. You're and welcome. We'll see you next time. See you Thursday, and then see you Tuesday. Bye now. Bye.